Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. In one of my previous videos we had a look at the netcode of the Battlefield 1 closed alpha and the results were not exactly amazing. In fact, Battlefield 4 offered lower delays than Battlefield 1 did. However, we knew that this alpha was not optimized and it did not even use the latest version of the netcode. For the beta, DICE promised that they will include more netcode changes and optimizations which should provide much better results. So how can we find out if these changes really make a difference in the beta? What we need is a high speed camera that is able to record at 400 frames per second, as well as two PCs where each of them has a 144Hz gaming monitor and separate internet connections. Now to measure the delay between two players I point my high speed camera at both monitors and have one player fire his gun 20 times. Inside the high speed recording I then look for the frame where I see the gunfire on the monitor on the right and then I count the frames until it appears on the monitor on the left. This then allows me to accurately calculate the delay that these two players experience while they play on the same server. Now to find out if DICE improved the netcode in Battlefield 1 we will also compare it to its predecessor. So when I did this test on a 30Hz TickRate Battlefield 4 server then the longest delay I measured was 82 milliseconds. The average was 75 milliseconds and the lowest measured delay was 54 milliseconds. On a 60Hz TickRate server the longest delay was 64 milliseconds, the average was 62 and the lowest was 57 milliseconds. The Battlefield 1 Alpha could not impress with the longest delay of 125 milliseconds, an average of 101 milliseconds and a shortest measured delay of 81 milliseconds. So I knew that the beta should provide better results because it had more netcode changes and Nvidia also provided a new driver that supported the Battlefield 1 beta. However, I was not quite prepared for what I saw in those high speed recordings after my first test. I actually did all 20 tests again on a different server just to make sure that they are correct. So in the Battlefield 1 beta I measured a longest delay of 47 milliseconds. On average I got 41 milliseconds and the lowest delay I measured was 33 milliseconds. Now if you've seen my last Overwatch video then you know what that means. The Battlefield 1 netcode has less delay than Overwatch which makes it the fastest 60Hz TickRate game that I have ever tested. And let's keep in mind that the beta does not even use the latest version of the Battlefield netcode which the final version of the game will ship with in October. So that is indeed very good, but so far we have only looked at the delay of gunfire and while this has a very big impact on the hit registration, it's not the only factor that affects how good or bad the game feels. Which is why I will now always do two additional movement tests for my netcode analysis videos. In the first one I wait until I see that the player jumps on his monitor and then measure how long it takes until the other player sees him jump. In the second test I wait until I see that the player moves on his monitor and then I count the frames until I see him move on the other monitor. So when you consider that I have to repeat each of these tests 20 times in order to get enough data then you can surely see how much more work that is. However, I think that it's worth it because it provides us with more information about the delays that players are affected by in an online multiplayer game and it ultimately allows us to better judge its networking. So in the jump test for Battlefield 4 I measured a longest delay of 82 milliseconds. On average I measured 72 milliseconds and the lowest delay I measured was 60 milliseconds. The results of the Battlefield 1 beta are then quite similar as you can see here and Overwatch is just slightly faster than these two Frostbite engine titles. The results of the second movement test are in line with those from the jump test which leaves us with the conclusion that movement has a bit more delay than gunfire. This could be caused by the netcode prioritizing the weapon and gunfire data or maybe the animation system that is driving these character animations is responsible for the extra delay. So the netcode of the Battlefield 1 PC beta is really fast which means that it has a good foundation for an online shooter. Now while this is great news you might wonder why the beta does not quite feel like it has the fastest and most responsive netcode ever. And I might be able to explain why. The game servers in the Battlefield 1 PC beta run at a tick or simulation rate of 60Hz. Which means that every 16.66 milliseconds it will begin to process the data it received, it will run its simulations, send the results to the clients and then it will sleep until the next tick happens. So the faster the server finishes a tick, the sooner the clients get a response, which causes that the game feels more responsive. When the server needs more time to finish a tick, then not only will the hit registration feel less responsive, but there is also an increased risk that something goes wrong, especially when the server tick processing time gets close to those 16.66 milliseconds. 
So I enabled the network graph in the beta and then I captured an hour of gameplay on a full 64 player server. What I noticed in the recording is that in the beta the average server tick time was quite a bit higher than in the alpha and I've seen it go past the 16.66 milliseconds mark several times during that hour. And when the server fails to process a tick inside that 16.66 milliseconds time frame, then you will very clearly notice that in game as this leads to all sorts of issues. So why is the server performance worse in the beta than it was in the alpha? First of all, this is not a demo. We are talking about an actual beta here, which means that neither the client nor the server have been fully optimized yet and there are still bugs. DICE is running these alpha and beta tests to find these issues so that they can fix them before the release. But it's not just server code optimizations and bugs that can cause these performance issues. The map also has a big impact on the performance of the server, which we can see in Battlefield 4 as well. Some maps are just more demanding than others, but DICE can still optimize the Battlefield 4 maps so that they don't hit the server that hard. Besides the lack of optimization, bugs and the more demanding map, we also know that players who have packet loss degrade the server's performance. So since this is now an open beta, it's possible that we see more players on the servers who have very bad connections to the data centers. An indicator for that are the numerous reports from players that they get the packet loss indicator quite a lot. So in order to improve this situation, DICE has to further optimize the game client, the game server and the maps. But what's really important is that they come up with the plan to counter the effect that players with packet loss have on the performance of the server. Besides the issues that are caused by the server not being able to finish a tick fast enough, there is also the issue of getting shot behind cover, which is caused by players with high pings and how the lag compensation handles them. So how much lag does Battlefield 4 compensate for when a high ping infantry player fires at a low ping infantry player? As long as the shooter has a ping of less than 250 milliseconds, the server will confirm the hit and the low ping player will receive the damage even if he already sees himself behind solid cover on his monitor. Once the shooter's ping is higher than 250 milliseconds, the server will begin to reject the hit. Which means that the shooter will only see the blood splatter and the impact animation but not get the hit marker and the other player will not receive any damage. The reason why the server rejects the hit now is that the difference between where the server sees the target player and where the shooter sees him has become too big. It's important to understand that the lag compensation is affected by the ping of the shooter and the speed at which the target travels. Which is why Battlefield games use two different lag compensation values since Battlefield 4. One for infantry combat and one for vehicle combat, because infantry players move slower than vehicles do. Now in Battlefield 1 it looks a bit different. Here the high ping player will get the hit confirmed by the server as long as he has a ping of less than 340 milliseconds, which means that the low ping player will receive damage much further behind cover in Battlefield 1 than in Battlefield 4. And in Battlefield 4 it's already quite annoying despite the lower lag compensation of frame history time value. Which is why servers that limit the maximum ping of players are quite popular on PC. So what do we know about the Battlefield 1 netcode? When the game releases in October then the PC servers will run at a default tick rate of 60Hz, which has been confirmed by David Serland from DICE LA. We also know that the Battlefield 1 beta does not use the latest version of the netcode, which means that the final version should perform even a bit better. Despite that, the delays in the beta are already extremely low, which provides a good foundation for the multiplayer. But what else does Battlefield 1 need in order to provide players with a good online experience? First of all, the server performance must become better, which means that we need lower server tick times. Further optimizations of the game server as well as the maps will help, but what we really need is a better way of how the server deals with players who have packet loss. If DICE cannot find a way to avoid that players with packet loss degrade the server, then they really have to disconnect them from the server. It's unfortunate that the connection of some players is bad, however you cannot allow a couple of players to destroy the experience of 40 other players who have a working connection. The lag compensation also needs to be changed because right now you will die further behind cover than in Battlefield 4, which really should not happen. We also need more locations where Battlefield 1 servers are hosted in order to provide players with low latency servers, which is especially an issue on console. A positive side effect of that is that you will also reduce the amount of hyping players who still kill you far behind cover in the Battlefield 1 beta. 
Also admins of console servers need to be able to choose from several different hosting locations inside of a region instead of only being able to select the region, which is just not good enough. Another important point for console admins is that they need to get support for third-party tools like Procon, so that they can properly manage the server they pay for. Microsoft and Sony might not like the idea to provide an admin of a console server with as much power as admins of PC servers have. However, I say that the server rental on console is not very attractive without that kind of control. So DICE really has to push forward here to provide their community with what they need to be able to properly manage their servers. Another topic is that admins and communities want to be able to run servers where only low pings are allowed or where they want to ensure that all players speak the same language. This can be achieved by using Procon and the High Ping Kicker as well as the Region or Country Lock plugin. However, the downside of these plugins is that there is no way for the player to know that these are active on the server, which means that he might get kicked instantly after he joins. To avoid this really bad user experience, the High Ping Kicker and the Region Lock features should be built into Battlefield 1, so that they get exposed to the server browser, which will then hide these servers that you cannot join. This will also enable a player to specifically search for servers that only allow a maximum ping of, in example, 75 milliseconds, or only allow players from a specific region or country in case that the player wants to be sure that everyone on the server speaks his language. If you fear that this will decrease the number of servers that you can play on, then I want to point at my previous suggestion that Battlefield 1 needs more server locations than, in example, Battlefield 4 has. And just to avoid any misunderstanding, these functions should be disabled by default, but the admin can choose to enable them on his server if he wants to. Then there's currently an option in Battlefield 1 which allows you to disable the performance icons that warn you about packet loss, ping spikes or the other things that will have a negative impact on your experience. This feature has to be removed because when you hear an alarm then the solution is not to turn the alarm off and proceed as nothing happened. You see these warning icons for a reason and you should be interested in fixing the issue that causes them to appear. The only situation where it's ok to hide these icons is when you disable the entire user interface to make screenshots or record a cinematic. But when you just play the game, then both the players and the developers must be sure that these warning icons will show up in every recorded gameplay that they see online, as these are very important to troubleshoot issues reported by the players. What console players are surely happy to hear is that they get the same scoreboard as the PC players, which means that it shows you the exact ping value of every player who is on the server. However, the server browser still shows you the signal strength icon and not the ping value. That has to be changed too to allow players to know the exact ping of a server before they join it. So the foundation that DICE has here is definitely a good one, but there is still a lot of work that needs to be done to ensure that players have a good online experience when the game releases in October. Thanks to the awesome support of my patrons, I'm able to test Battlefield 1 as well as Titanfall 2 and the next Call of Duty right after launch. So if you want to know how good or bad the online experience is in these games, then you just have to keep an eye on my channel for a detailed analysis. I'm also working on the requested CSGO video where I will provide you with network tests on 64 and 128 tick servers, as well as results from input lag tests at various frame rates, refresh rates, as well as full screen and windowed mode, so stay tuned for that. Lastly, if you like this kind of niche content that I provide here, then you can help me to keep the lights on by supporting me through Patreon. The link is in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.